Hello, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm great, thanks. Oh my goodness, you have had the most wild time recently. You've been performing Jimmy Fallon, America's Got Talent, Good Morning America, Starstruck UK. I guess first things first, are you sleeping? Are you staying hydrated? Trying, yes, <laughs> yeah, trying. Um, yeah, I mean, it's been a whirlwind couple of weeks, but it's exciting, you know, it's the, this is, you know, kind of comes with the territory putting out an album, you, you know, you, you hustle it for a minute. Hustling for sure. That was one of the, like I asked your fans to send through some questions and that was the one question they asked. They're like, is he sleeping? Can you make sure he is okay? This is the best part about a proper smoky eye is it really covers up a lot of sleep deprivation. <laughs> <laughs> Cover those bags a little bit, but you're Absolutely. looking fab fabulous as always. Oh, thank you. Let's talk about the album, High Drama. Such an incredible album. You've taken on a bunch of covers. You've put your own sprinkle through each and every one of those songs that are on the album, which I'm obsessed with. Oh, Is everyone yeah. from Lana Del Rey through to Sia, how did you decide which songs you wanted to include in the album? It was it was definitely a process. You know, I had a long list to begin with. And then slowly but surely, like, I kind of came up with like a criteria. You know, I had a couple of ideas for a few of them. And then the album title sort of materialized. And I was like, okay, so high drama is the, the concept. Um, so all the songs had to sort of answer to that, you know, they had to sort of have drama to them, whether it be in the lyrics or in the, the feel of the song, um, or what I was going to reinvent it like. Um, and also like a lot of the, the, the stories in the songs were things that I felt like I could relate to for my own life. And that was important so that it felt authentic, even though I didn't write them. And I think you've done that so well. As I said, you've put a little sprinkle of you in them and you have really stuck to that whole dramatic feel. Like every single one of the songs is just got this dramatic vibe to it, which I'm so here for. It's definitely what I'm known for. So I, you know, I, I think, I think over the years, like, you know, as you get a little more mature as a, as a performer, as an artist, you start recognizing like what you definitely are and what you're not. Um, you you start learning more and more what your audience expects of you. Um, and I think this album in many ways is like sort of, uh, it kind of, it's a full circle. Um, it goes back to sort of my first album in some ways. There's a lot of like little, uh, you know, kind of stylistic cues from the, that time. Um, and yeah, I love, I like, I've, I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed it. It's like a, it's like a new chapter, you know? Yeah, that's amazing. You've spoken in, in interviews recently talking about how you're feeling so comfortable in yourself, musically, yourself as a person. How did you kind of, I guess, spending so much time in the industry, you will just become comfortable with whatever is going on. But is there anything in particular that has made you feel like you're just so confident in yourself right now? Well, I think if I look back on the last, you know, 13 years, um, I've had so many amazing opportunities and moments and um, I've gotten to travel and I've gotten to meet amazing people and sing all over the world. And, you know, and it's like, I bought myself a house, you know, like a grown up. Um, you know, there's things like that, that, that make me feel like, you know what, I'm doing a good job. Things are great. Um, and yeah, I just, I, I definitely think the important thing is never to get too settled though. I love continuing to try to find the next thing to work on and the next discovery yeah i wanted to ask you because this is a covers album can we expect another album i'm like it's so rude to ask that when you've just released an album but can we expect a new album adam lambert songs that you have written yourself for sure for sure i'm i'm i'm, I'm not gonna you know stop songwriting i actually am working on another project Ooh. that i started at the very beginning of the pandemic but it takes a lot longer to finish it is a musical. Uh, oh my god! Really excited about it's sort of a rock pop musical. It's it, it takes place in the seventies in New York City. It's very glam. It's very queer. Um, and I, that will actually be an album of mine first, so like a concept album where I'm singing all the songs. And then the plan is to then adapt it for the stage or even maybe the screen. Holy shit! I am so excited for that. I am too. Yeah, I'm really excited. <laughs> Because you are a theater kid from way back. So it's am, so cool yeah. that you're dabbling back into that whole area. Yeah, it's, you know, I miss it. I miss theater. I, I really loved it. it. It shaped a lot of the kind of performer I am. And, um, you know, the art form itself is something I have a lot of respect for. I, I have a lot of friends in theater still. And um, I just love the art form. So I, 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 I'm, I'm really excited about this musical. I think it's going to be something really special. And I'm, 
I'm thrilled and excited for people to be able to hear it soon. Oh my gosh, so excited. Yeah. Do you see yourself being in the show if you do adapt it for the stage? I don't know yet. I don't know yet. It's possible. It's definitely possible. But I also, you know, it could be that I'm, you know, I stay behind the scenes on this one. You know, I I, I will always perform. I will always be um, an artist and, and love being on stage. But it's also exciting to open up new avenues um, creatively and and get involved in things where maybe I'm a behind the scenes, you know, figure, maybe I've written something or created something or produced something. I love the possibilities. I think that I, I see before me at this point. And I guess for you, it's amazing because you have this great platform, being able to share that platform and provide somebody else who is up and coming potentially yeah. that platform to use the stage and build yeah. their career. The more I do and the longer I'm in the business the you know, uh, the, the more I've learned. And I, I like being able to take that experience and, bring it to other areas, you know? I want to talk to you also about the Getting Older video. Such an incredible video. And <laughs> it's a walk down memory lane. It's also a little, like, I guess, time lapse into the future as well, which is super cool. Personally, I find Getting Older the scariest thing ever. Like, it freaks <laughs> me the hell out. Yeah. Is it also well, something that... Like 31? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I feel like 30 is a big milestone. And then wait 11 years wait in 10 years because i just turned 41 so it's okay. like you know all i'll say is when you're 41 you'll think oh well 31 was easy <laughs> <laughs> so i think the motto of the story or the moral of the story is that like you know you got to be present you got to enjoy the moment that you're in and just take every day one day at a time and 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 you know live and i also find that like as you go through life you you were talking before about how you found this confidence in yourself and I feel the more time you spend with yourself as time goes on you do get more comfortable and confident in yourself well that's that's definitely the best part about growing up I think is that is 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 what you've learned you know and what you know I wouldn't trade that I mean I think so someone asked me a couple of weeks ago they're like would you would you trade and 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 go be 20 again and I said you know maybe for a weekend <laughs> 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 for a vacation it'd be cute but no I don't think I would trade it I mean I look back on when I was younger and there was so there was so much I didn't understand and there was so much that I I doubted about myself that now I've learned about myself um but you know that being said the beauty of youth is that there's so many possibilities and there's so much that you haven't done yet and that po the, the, that newness is really beautiful yeah. It is so great experiencing new things, trying new things for the first time. And I guess yeah. as time goes on, there's less and less of those things happening. Yeah. So mm -hmm. youth is, I mean, we all love, you know, everyone chases youth. I mean, it's like part of our, it's part of how we're designed. You know what I mean? I think, um, you know, I always want to know like what, what's the up and coming thing that the kids are listening to and you know, all that. It's like, you still want to have like a line to that, that, that hunger, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's maybe one of the reasons why TikTok is such a thing. Like, kids are on there and they're just so chill and so cool about it. And I'm looking yeah. on there being like, "What are the kids doing?" Like, that's well, and, so it's, cool. and, and I love TikTok too because it's so creative. You know what I mean? Yeah, just this this like everyone's trying to create something, and it's not necessarily about how you. Well, some of them it's about how you look, but yeah. it, it's it's more than that. You know, the videos that really go viral are videos that like there's something about them that's interesting or funny or beautiful or it's you have to create. And I think that's that's really exciting that that's become such a celebrated thing. One hundred percent. Your New Zealand fans would absolutely murder me if I did not ask you. The last time you were in New Zealand for a solo show was back in 2015. Can we yeah. expect Adam Lambert in New Zealand at any time in the future? I don't have anything planned as of right now, but people seem to be liking high drama and that's uh, that's what you need to go um, and do a tour. So fingers crossed. <laughs> One thing I like to ask everybody I talk to, who's an up and coming artist that you're listening to at the moment that everyone needs to check out? There's a kid named Isaac Dunbar, who's really interesting. Um, I've mentioned him a few times. I just met Rule the other uh, doing um, TV the other day, a TV thing, he's a nice guy. And he's awesome. And I, and, you know, after meeting him and, you know, um, backstage, I was like, oh, I'm going to check out your album. And it's a really good album. It's like really good. I think he's coming to New Zealand next week or the week after maybe. Yeah. So yeah, love like, rule. Like, nice, that's a legend. Like a nice down to earth guy, which is always nice, you know. 
Totally. I also have a couple of fan questions for you. Sure. Erica has messaged in and she said, what word of encouragement would you, hang on, what word of encouragement have you received that rocked your world and who said it? Word of, I, I've gotten some advice and I'm trying, I don't even remember who's told it to me, but there's this whole concept of like compare and despair. So like we, we you know, and especially with social media, it you can fall into the trap of comparing yourself to people and it never, it, it always makes you feel bad nine times out of 10. Um, you know, and I think, I think it's, I think it's a dangerous trap. So I think the advice that I, that I received that now I would like to pass on is make sure that you just do you just do make, you know, know that you are enough and that you're your own thing and there's nobody else like you. And that's great. That is such great advice. And there's a particular quote by Katy Perry that I remember so vividly i think it was from the part of me movie that she did and oh, at that. the time yeah. <laughs> they were trying to like make her the next alanis morissette and she said i don't want to be the next alanis morissette i don't want to be the next anyone i just want to be the first katie perry yeah and i was like damn it that hits me in the feels yeah. i mean that's kind of that's been sort of my journey is that i i definitely think over the past 13 years there's been a couple moments where i was like oh i should do this because it's trendy or maybe i should do this but then again it's that compare and despair thing and i think what I love about where I'm at right now with putting out this album is that I don't feel the need to be anything other than exactly what I am, which feels really liberating. And what you are is bloody cool. So just hey. keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> I'm a total um, nerd. I mean, if that's cool, I'm into it, you know? It's cool to me. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Bryn has sent in a message saying, what do you do with all the sleeves that you've removed from your shirts and jackets? Do you just have a random drawer of <laughs> sleeves stashed in your closet? There's been a couple of jackets where I've taken the sleeves up and we've saved the sleeves just in case I want to reattach them. Um, oh yeah. You know, but it's like that it ends up happening when I'm doing tours or concerts and I'm on stage and we're in a climate that's like, just like hot. And I have, and I've brought like a jacket that I love, but I'm just like, I'm dying. So the, the, the cutting the sleeves off is definitely a practical decision. <laughs> I feel like it would be super cool to like take the sleeves off one jacket and then like put the sleeves Ooh. on a different jacket. Or maybe just one sleeve. Ooh, that's a vibe too. That's next, yeah. <laughs> oh my God, look at us. So many ideas. I'm 100% sure how to pronounce this name. I think it's Sibelius in LA has tweeted saying, I feel like even though I fell in love with his vocals early during American Idol, I feel like he has grown and established more control and tone and just sounds so Aww. dreamy to me. Aww. So cute. Um, how does this happen? Does it take lessons or has your voice just evolved over time? Well, you know, it's interesting because it, it has shifted a bit. I, I, I noticed it too. And I think age is a big part of that. I mean, your vocal cords are a muscle. They're part of your body. So they're always changing with your body. Um, you know, they're not, it, you're not going to sound exactly the same at 40 that you did at, you know, 20 or at 30. Um, and I think my, I think personally, like on a technical level, I've gotten a, some a slightly lower notes than I had before, which I I'm into. Um, I used to I remember when I used to sing songs, it was like a struggle to get to the low parts of songs. That was always uncomfortable for me, but I could like live in the stratosphere the whole time. And I think over the last few years, it's like, it's settled a bit and I kind of like it. It feels good. It feels warmer um, and it has more texture to it. So it, it, in some cases it sounds better in the studio than it did before. Um, I'm discovering a lot about it. I really, I, I, I love that it's changing. I think it's fun. That's such an interesting concept. Like I've never thought about, because obviously singing is basically your instrument. And yeah. if you play the trumpet or something like that, you can definitely learn new skills, but it's not like the trumpet's tone is going to change over time. However, a voice does. Well, I mean, I, I, I don't know, maybe, you know, some instruments, the older they are, they do kind of change, you know, it's like, uh, you know, a really retro guitar is going to have a specific sound and then a brand new one's going to sound totally different, you know, it does, I mean, it, you know, yeah. wear and tear, so to speak, changes the way things resonate or, or, you know, the way that they phonate or whatever. And, you know, that's the beauty of like the rock voice is that, you know, being on the road with Queen for 10 years, it's definitely like shredded me up a little bit, but I love that. I think it's so cool. I mean, listen to Freddie Mercury's voice. If you listen to the recordings that they did when they first started, his voice was much more like clean and then if you go to like into the 80s, it had all this like amazing tone and texture and like weight to it. So like the voice changes, you know? And I think 
um, you know, it's just like our bodies, they shift. And I don't know. I love that. I think, I think it's funny when, when fans kind of can't wrap their head around the fact that artists are people and just like them. And we change, we, we evolve, we, we, uh, things shift. And so, you know, I think some, every once in a while a fan will be like, why can't you be exactly like you were in 2009? It's like, well, are you? <laughs> <laughs> if you are, I will be, but you're not. Yeah, so I mean, moving right along. <laughs> yeah, I, lo I love the changes. I love that. Yeah, it is amazing. It'd be boring if we all stayed the same forever. Right? Yeah. yeah. Adam Lambert, it's been so incredible catching up with you. Congratulations on the release of High Drama. And please do come and visit us in New Zealand sometime soon. Thank you so much. I would love to. I will be there soon. Bye.